Hello, 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 hello. Where the hell is that from? <laughs> I don't know. That's that's going way back, I think. Uh yeah. Creepy. Is that from the Three Stooges? I don't know. That sounds crazy. But anyway, this is June. Yeah, I know we're coming on to May, right? I'm recording this and it's still April, but we want to talk about the the overall energies of the month of June because next we'll be coming up your June rising sign readings. Uh, but before we get to that, we kind of want to take an overview look of the energies, okay? So for those of you who are super sharp, who've got your own charts at home, you can actually take what I present here, what I'm going to talk through right together. I'll point some things out and you can find like these degrees in your charts. Remember dates equal degrees, degrees equal dates. Okay. And you find the sign. And then when you find that sign, you then look to see what house number it's in. And if all that confuses you and you're like, what the hell, right? Um, let me know, comment below and I can get your chart to you. And that is the only way to get you started on the path to just literally start with your own chart and start looking for something as simple as the moon. Okay. So let's start there. Let's just start the month of June and let me make sure I'm on and make sure that you guys are, we're recording and okay. Because once I dive into this chart, there's no going back, right? You know me. So here we are, we've got the chart. Let me get a pen going here. And, um, hmm, we're going to mark the moon with this color right here. Oh, well, look at that. It's just the same old blue. Hold on. I thought I had it in a light blue. There we go. Now it is. All right. So you see that we've got the moon and it's in this light, this little, uh, this is, I call this the, the color for, uh, Aquarius and Uranus. Cause that's the color. It's like that ocean blue or something. Yeah. Yet, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Does it? Anyway, that's the moon. You see the symbol, the glyph? That might be a little hard to see. How about I go like that? There you go. Ooh, awesome. So there's the moon, you guys, right? There's the glyph for the moon, the symbol, the glyph, same thing. And like there's the sun over here, right? That's the sun. I can start by drawing. Oh, that's a really. F that is a really. Yeah, I was going to say that's a very substantial <laughs> arrow. <laughs> So this is the sun and the moon and Mercury, and that's Venus, okay? So that's some of those. And then we get on a little bit further. We're looking at Mars and then Jupiter. And you see I've got an arrow on Jupiter. So that's going to be something we're going to talk about. And Saturn. And then we've got Uranus, right? I've got an arrow on Uranus, so we'll be talking about that. And the North Node. I jumped. Sorry for those of you who are following along. That's the North Node. There's Pluto. There is Neptune. Okay, that's Neptune. I know between that and Uranus, they almost look the same. But you see, Neptune's got the cross there, right? Neptune's got the cross because it's like that Christ consciousness energy. And um, yeah, I put a big old mark there through something. Uh, but then we are going to have um, some other things that we might not talk about will depend see how much time we got. Okay. So let's zoom back out again. So here we go. June, 2023, June 1st. Now we're not going to go through the 30 days. We're going to highlight the spots that I've marked off for you guys. All right. I've already kind of gone over this. Okay. And this is how I do your rising sign readings. I literally have to see the whole month in front of me. So I first start here and then I draw up the chart. Right. And then I look at it and I understand where Gemini is and where Pluto, you know, is in what sign and, and all your signs. Right. I do it like that. And I know that's saying a lot without saying anything. So <laughs> let's just skip past that. But before I get there, again, if you want your chart to at least get started, just comment below. I help you out in any way I can. And if that means to just at least send you your chart and then at least point out what your rising sign is and your moon sign and your sun sign, that's a place to start. Okay. That's a good place to start. And the moon, there it is. It's in the sign of Scorpio. It's in Scorpio. It's at eight degrees. Okay. Now the sun, I've got a red line under that sun. The sun is in Gemini. This is the first day of June. And I have these marked and underlined, uh, especially the Gemini energy, because it's important. Because look, we've got Jupiter at 324 in Earth in the sign of Taurus. And look, the North Node, 
is also underlined because it's at three degrees, 337, and it's in Taurus. You see that? That means Jupiter and the North Node are conjunct at the beginning of June. And I already do have a video out about that. It's been out for a few months already. Uh, it's considered the most auspicious time of the, for the year of 2023, the most beneficial time for things like the rubber hitting cement, for things stabilizing, for things to stabilize, for us to feel a little bit more grounded. Remember, Taurus is money and values, a creature comforts. It can be love and self-worth, okay? So finding out where this 324 is, where the three, four, two, three, four degrees in Taurus in your chart tells you where you're going to have your Jupiter and your North Node conjunction. Okay. So remember the values, Taurus, my creature comforts, my love, who I love, what I love, uh, textiles, clothing, peace, and beauty, earth loving Taurus at the beginning of the month. It sets it off, right? And the sun is in Gemini at 10 degrees. This is important because the Gemini energy is the news. This is the reporter. This is the scribe. This is, I've been keeping track and learning, and I'm now sharing the information. I'm sharing what I have. Okay. So there could be something big with values and money and likely banking, because that's also Taurus energy banking, right? And look, 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 we've got Mars at six degrees in Leo to kick off the month. And why does that matter, folks? Well, that tells us if Mars is already at six, that means at the end of May, Mars would have been in a lower degree, right? Because it goes up in numbers. So Mars would have been at like three, four, and five. So you're talking two weeks before because it takes Mars approximately about, I think about seven days to move two degrees, if I'm not mistaken. So if we go back two degrees, then Mars is at four, right? So technically, then Mars would have been squaring the three degrees of Taurus energy, right? Because it's in Leo and that squares it. And then Venus is in Cancer. So this is home and family. This is feminine energy. This is the emotions. This is the public sentiment. This is how the public is feeling about things, how you feel about mom, the mother wound, right? It's Venus in, in feminine energy. Venus does pretty good here. Venus is all about senses and sensitivities and sensualities and Venus wants peace. So I like that Venus, the peace loving Venus is in the sign of cancer. It's like, can we all just get along? Let's make peace. Let's, you know, let's make this work. Let's compromise Venus, right? Peace, peace, loving, earth loving Venus loves things to be beautiful. Okay. And then Mercury in Taurus. So the beginning of June is a big deal because Mercury is in Taurus at 1549. Mercury's a pretty quick mover, all right? It can move like two degrees in one day, and the sun moves one degree in a day, one degree in a day. So Mercury being at 15, that means that at the end of May, right, Mercury would have been in, um, you know, Mercury would have been I'm, I'm trying to understand the energy here. So if Mercury is in Taurus, which it would have been, it's talking about values. It's talking about banking and commerce and, and um, you know, just barter and trade, the stock market. Think of all the Gemini keywords because Mercury rules Gemini, right? And it's in Taurus. So it's truly about banking. It's truly about, your you know, your businesses. It's truly about Mercury going through the books. Remember, Mercury's in a retrograde and here her retrograde is over and she is just about out of the shadow zone. When Mercury hits 16 degrees, she'll clear her shadow zone. And you see the very next day here, she was at 1549 and here she's already at 1647, 17 degrees. So she moved two degrees in one day. And so our values our investments, our natural resources, the earth, climate change, like this is all Taurus stuff, right? Food, our water even, right? Our creature comforts, so our water, our clothing. Think of, just think of all the natural resources of all the things we're dependent upon. And so the news we'll be highlighting, we'll be hearing, we'll just be hearing about a lot of that stuff. Now, when the moon is in Scorpio, we're highly intuitive. Okay. And the moon only stays in a sign for 48 hours, roughly. So it's, it's really a fascinating thing when you follow the moon, because then you see in your chart, you see how fast it goes through your chart and the different signs that it goes, goes in. And you can see 
and be aware of the, your own moods. Like what is important to you? What is emotionally satisfying to you? What are you suddenly interested in that you weren't, that you didn't find any interest in a couple of days before, you know, just two days before you were all about reading a story, reading a book. And now all of a sudden you're all about working out or all of a sudden you're about, you know, just sitting around talking on the phone, right? It's very different. It's very different. One day it could be all about business. One day it's like, let's talk about going on a vacation and a fantasy because that's Sagittarius. So pay attention to your moon sign. If you know nothing else, follow the moon in your chart and it might take you a full year of doing that. And that's fine. Eventually over time, you'll get it. You'll get it. It takes time. The, the astrology, Aquarius energy, ancient ruler is Saturn. Saturn demands your time. It's not going to give you the knowledge quickly. It demands your time. It asks for the most valuable asset that you have. The one thing you cannot create more of, your time. All right. Now, as we move on through the month, I have some things marked off we're going to take a look at. We've got June 6th. What's happening on June 6th? We are, sun is still in Gemini energy at 15 degrees. And we've got Leo at zero degrees. It's Venus in Leo at zero degrees. Now, I want everyone to pay attention to this Venus because she will be doing a retrograde in the sign of Leo. Now, Leo is my children, my joy, my creativity, my fun. Remember, it's like drama and theater and comedians, but it can also be politicians, people who are performing in some way, a performance art, possibly even athletes. It's Leo energy, right? Think of people with the long hair, right? They got the mane, right? Absolutely. I'm not a Leo, but I do have my Jupiter in Leo. Right. There you go. Right. I just put a connected some dots there, but your Venus, what you value will be going through the sign of Leo and it will be doing a retrograde. We'll have a detailed video out about that later on in the month, later on down the line where we'll talk about that. Um, those details, we'll go over those details then. March, I said March because it's an M Monday, <laughs> June 12th, Monday, June 12th. We've got Mercury that's just moved into the sign of Gemini. Mercury's now in Gemini. Mercury's really strong here, super strong. It's very powerful. It's at home here. Mercury does really well here, okay? It's going to be talking about news because that's Gemini energy, news and learning and your neighbors, learning something new. This is sales. This is social media. This is your phone the devices. This is also cars and automobiles, like going on a short trip, the, you know, the, the flea market, you have the farmer's market, you know, like your community, your neighborhood, the housing market, housing market and real estate. You guys have been hearing me talk about that a lot lately. It's a lot of that Taurus energy, the real estate, right? And the earth. Yep. The housing market. That's my phone. That's my mom. Um, just keeping track of where she's at. And then I've got a lot of yellow here. What's up with all that yellow? We've got Venus at five, almost six degrees in a, in cans in, I'm sorry, Leo, a fixed sign. And then we have Mars in Leo as well. Venus and Mars in Leo together. That's right. And then we have Taurus energy, Jupiter and Taurus at five degrees. So, so far, what are the commonalities here, right? We also have Saturn in Pisces at seven degrees. Uh, Uranus at 2047, 21 degrees, the sign of Uranus in Taurus. And then we have Neptune at 2727. Whoa, this is the first time Neptune's hit this degree. So this is a big deal. These are some new degrees that we're encountering. And then Pluto at 2959. So this is all highlighted because it's telling us what will be in the news. What will we be hearing about? What's going on? Right? So Venus in Leo. Remember, Venus in Leo could be a public figure. Venus in Leo, maybe feminine energy. Okay. Mars in Leo, a public figure, very likely. Right. And then we have Jupiter at 542 in Taurus fixed. That squares Venus. See how they're squaring exactly? Because they're at the same degrees. They're at the same degrees and they're both in a fixed sign. Leo and Taurus. They're both in a fixed sign. 
You might not be able to see that. So they're squaring, they're angling off. It's Jupiter squaring Venus, which can be beneficial for some of you. Okay. Uh, but we'll be hearing about it because of the Mercury in Gemini. And that's what's, yeah, we'll be talking about it as well. And then we've got Pluto that just went back. It went from zero degrees Aquarius on March. I'm sorry, my brain, June 12th, it went to 2959 of Capricorn. So public figures, people who have power and money, uh, these are like, yeah, sick money, big companies, big corporations. Uh, this is people who just have a lot of wealth. A lot of wealth is what you got here. Okay. So that's just to give you a taste. We'll be doing more videos, I'm sure, as we get closer to this energy. And then we move to the 18th of June. It's a Sunday. Uh, I've only got one thing marked, and it's Saturn. It begins its retrograde. There's the R. Saturn begins its retrograde at seven degrees in Pisces. It goes back to all to zero degrees of Pisces. So you're going to look for those degrees in your chart to better understand that. And we'll have a video out to cover that and to give you more details on that as well. And the next date is June 22nd. Here we are, summer solstice energy. We've got zero degrees of cancer, right? Zero degrees of cancer is where the sun is at. And uh, for some of us, depending upon where we're located, yep, for us, for our, where I'm at, the hemisphere I'm in, longest day of the year, right? That's when our sun is at its zenith, right? It's at its height of its zenith. And it's uh, the longest day. And from that day on, we start decreasing in light. Our days become, our days of amount of light become, start to become shorter, start to become a little bit shorter. Now, we go to the next date, and that's the 28th of June, June 28th. Here we go. June 28th, what do I have underlined? I have Mercury in the sign of Cancer. Mercury in the sign of Cancer. Mercury went fast. Did you see that? Mercury zoomed. In the month of June, Mercury was in Taurus. And then by the 12th, it was in Gemini. And then by the 28th, Mercury's already in the sign of cancer. So the last two days of June, we're in cancer energy. Okay. Now there's a, there's, a, there's a little bit of a, a story here. There's a little bit of a story. And the story goes like this. We've got Venus all in that Leo energy. So it's feminine energy. Remember Leo is romance. What was going on? It's fiery, right? And then there's the news, somebody in the spotlight, likely somebody in charge. If you follow U.S. politics at all or any of the news, you probably can already gather or at least have an idea some of the stories that might be occurring at this time and what this may be about, right? But somebody who's got massive power or who had massive power because we're talking about Pluto. And Pluto is now talking about somebody who used to be in power at 2959. Pluto's going back to clean house. Pluto goes all the way back to 27 degrees of Capricorn. So for many of you, you're going to experience a couple of months where it's going to bring you some ease depending upon the things in your chart. I was just doing uh, a reading with somebody and they have a moon at 29 degrees in an earth sign, right? So this means that when Pluto goes to 29, it trines that for them, right? And so it can stabilize things a little bit, right? Especially if it's a moon that it trines, it'll stabilize the emotions where we don't feel so, you know, we don't kind of maybe, we, we don't feel as lost, you know, we, we kind of feel like, okay, we're making some, some headway here, right? We're, we're working on something because it's Capricorn. It's a goal. It's a goal. It's grounded. It's serious. It's thinking long-term. It's thinking tangible. But because it's Pluto retrograding, it's going over things that have already been done. Things that have already been said and talked about and communicated. Gemini. Remember, Mercury's going through Gemini. It does really good here. It goes fast, but it's absolutely going to be talking about a lot of these things, about a lot of the abuses of power. It's going to, uh, let's not forget, Saturn is in Pisces. And Pisces can also be public figures. 
you know, like movie stars, Hollywood, um, it can be political figures, even anybody who's a public figure, anybody who's in the spotlight. These can be your favorite artist, your favorite musician. So we think of sound and music, screenplays and movies, right? Like that's all Pisces, poetries. Remember, Pisces folks, wherever it is in your chart, be certain and be and just, just understand Pisces is illusions and delusions. So many times we really don't see things as clearly, right? And so we have to kind of not make a quick judgment. We got to kind of wait for the energy to move. But what I will say is with Saturn going through Pisces, it is clarifying some of those confusions and delusions. Saturn is here. And so it has the ability to structure and organize some of the fantasy, some of that story, right? It says, okay, let's clean this up a little bit. Let's put some order to this and let's try to piece this together and see if we can make it make sense because that's Saturn. It wants to achieve something. And so it's going to reorganize and structure all of the Piscean themes, whatever we thought was a fantasy or an illusion or a story, you know, that's what it does. Right. And it also restricts Saturn's a good, re it, it can restrict because it says, okay, you can't do this. If you were able to do this before, you might not be able to do this now because Saturn is known to slow things down. That's its job. Remember? It demands our time, Saturn. That's what it does. It, they call Saturn the taskmaster. But instead of giving it names, I just kind of try to want to look at it in a practical, tangible way and at least be able to tell you guys, like, you know, this is the, the, the little bit of a story. And so you can figure out how this plays out in your life by understanding where's the Gemini energy in your chart, where's your Leo energy, and I would emphasize Leo energy a lot because Venus does a retrograde in Leo and it's not just in the month of June. Like when, when Gem, when Leo, I'm sorry, when Venus hits the six degrees of Leo, um, when Venus hits not six, but when Venus hits 12 degrees of Leo, I'm going to underline this. So it's actually here and it's on the 20th, June 20th. When Venus hits Wait, is that the right date or is it the 19th? It's the 19th. My eyes all messed up. Yeah. <laughs> when Venus hits on the 19th of June, she's going to be hitting that 12 degrees of Leo. This is beginning the shadow zone for a Venus retrograde, right? Which means Venus is going to go all the way. She's going to travel all the way through Leo energy. And then she's going to go backwards. And this is where she comes back to. 12 degrees of Leo, which means Venus is what I love and who I love, my values, right? my creature comforts, right? Venus is thinking about romance and children, joy, creativity, how I have a good time with my body, right? The performances. Think of how I shine and express and radiate uniquely. It's my humor. It's my happy place. Leo is a whole lot of things. It's where we stand out. It's where it's that thing we do that makes us us, right? The thing you do that makes you, you. That's Leo energy. It's our vibrancy. It's our energy. And so Venus there, she doesn't do especially well because, well, Venus rules Taurus and they're both fixed signs. And so they square each other, right? So typically for some folks, Venus going through Leo, this can be a time where it's like, especially because it's a retrograde. If we were in a relationship, we're thinking it through. We're like, okay, this didn't really turn out the way I thought it was going to turn out. We're going to have second doubts and second thoughts because Venus and Leo, there might be, there might be a little combativeness because Venus just wants peace and she wants things to be beautiful. Right. But Leo energy is very, it's fiery. It's assertive. It can be in your face. And Venus is just like, Whoa, hold on. Let's back up a little bit. I don't know, like that's, that might be too much for me, right? Leo likes to take a risk. Leo energy is very risky. Venus isn't. Venus rules Taurus. It's cautious. It doesn't like to take a risk. You follow? So Leo may present some challenges for Venus at this time. And this typically represents our love and the relationships we're in. All right. So find out We'll have a detailed video on this, but I just wanted you to, to at least see that heads up in the themes. Now, here's the other last piece of news for June. 
there are no eclipses. There are no eclipses where there's no eclipses for June or July or even August, but we do have some coming. Okay. And so I will have those videos up on the channel uh, as soon as I can possibly get them recorded so that we have, um, you know, a proper outlook because I realize by me putting up a video just a few months in advance, especially with eclipses, it's not enough time. There are plenty of folks out there who have eclipses at those exact degrees. And when they happen, you're feeling them six months prior to the date of the eclipse. And so sometimes what we're going through, we don't understand it. But yet, if I talk to you about the eclipse, then you're like, oh, shit, that's exactly that. Right. So let me get my work done and get that out there for you guys so that we get the October eclipse up as soon as possible. All right. So uh, I will have a video up for June for the new moon, right? And for the full moon, we'll talk about those things and um, we'll incorporate it into your, your rising sign readings. So I am here to help you. If you need help, if you don't have your chart, let me know. If you have your chart, but you need clarification, let me know. If you have your chart and, and you're confused, it's okay. This channel is really about <clears throat> learning to better know ourselves. Okay. And so that's my passion. So if you've got a question, if you've got a concern, I really, really, really am here to help out in any way that I can, but I want you to just keep in mind, you're not the only person. Okay. Sometimes I start a communication and, and yeah, anyway, so I just, I just want, let, I, we got to think fair and balanced. Okay. Think fair and balanced. I'm here for the duration, right? I'm here for the duration. So if you have patience, if you have patience, I will make my way back to your question. And the best way to keep me active with you and what's going on in your life is to make sure that I'm seeing you on the channel, in the comments. You don't know how many people will send me private messages and they're like, oh yeah, what is this? And it's like, no, don't do that. Don't, please don't do that. If we're talking about your private chart because there's a confusion on how to read it and it's a learning astrology moment, I can answer that question. But guess what? Other people can learn that much more if you put it in the comments. And that's what the platform is for. It's for the community. I realize there may be certain issues, certain things that are a little bit more private. And so we might need to have a little bit more private of a conversation. And then, well, that's fine. You contact me personally, right, through the email, and then we will etch out some time for you. We'll work together. You follow? But if it's a simple question, I don't have a problem with it. But if it involves something totally deep and, 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 and you know, it consumes time, well, then we probably need to work together, right? Yeah. But I love to help people to take quick looks. I got no problem with that at all. I'm here to help you again in any way that I can. Okay. So I will see you in the next video. Bye -bye. Below the video, I'll have all the degrees for those of you who like to pay attention to the degrees in your chart. Again, if you don't know and you want to know, just comment below.